Peter, can you give me an update on what's been happening at Air Astana recently? Well, we've had a, a, another um, pretty good year in terms of growth. Um, the airline's grown its capacity by 70% this year, uh, and traffic has pretty much matched that. So it has been uh, a continuous uh, a, a period of, of continuous growth now, really, since um, since the sort of middle of 2009 when we came out of the recession. Um, Obviously, um, you know, financially it's been a bit more difficult this year. There's uh, the oil price uh, and the fuel price hasn't helped, um, but we still expect to be uh, to be profitable, very profitable in fact, um, and consistent with the sort of long-term average of profitability. So really, it's been a very good year, um, and um, we're expecting that to continue. Um, some of the markets um, are looking a, a bit shaky, particularly European markets, but the Asian market is very good. Uh, the domestic market continues uh, to grow um, and our regional routes which we've been growing now for the last two and a half years have been very successful. Okay, and what's, what's, <coughs> what is the, the growth strategy going forward? Again, we'll continue, uh, over the last couple of years we've very much concentrated um, on growing um, the, the routes within this region and when we say this region we mean uh, the CIS, the former Soviet Union uh, republics that are adjacent to ourselves, and that's the other parts of Central Asia, um, and also parts of South and Southeastern Russia. Um, this has been a conscious strategy of ours to build up what we call um, these surrogate home markets, um, and by doing so, um, expanding our um, sort of home market catchment territory, if you like, from 16 million people in Kazakhstan to around 50 million people in the region. <clears throat> that will continue to be the focus. It, it has been it has been successful uh, thus far. Um, also, together with that, we continue to expand our routes to uh, to Asia. Uh, we've increased frequencies uh, on our Chinese routes, um, uh, on our routes to Bangkok and Kuala Lumpur. Uh, we will be starting a route to Hong Kong uh, fairly soon, um, and we're very actively um, looking at starting a route to Ho Chi Minh City uh, in in Vietnam. Um, so these are the primary. Uh, this, this, these are the primary focuses in terms of route expansion. Okay, uh, and you've recently opened a new engineering centre. Um, what was the sort of long term plan for this? Is, is this the idea to kind of, sort of spin it off, perhaps, for sort of uh, as, as Aristana Engineering? You know? Well, I mean, up until now, you know, we've had, we have a one four five license, of course, and yes, one four five license that is um, audited by the UKCA every year. Uh, up until now, that has been um, confined to limited to HX. Um, obviously, you know, we are a long way um, from uh, maintenance centres here, yeah. uh, and therefore, sending aircraft overseas is an expensive and time-consuming operation. Um, traditionally, there has not been uh, any. Um, uh, European approved uh, or indeed FAA approved uh, uh, heavy maintenance facility um, in this region um, and therefore we've, we've decided to sort of dip our toe in that if you like. Um, the start of that has been the development uh, of this maintenance and workshop uh, centre. Um, we're now doing non-destructive testing, uh, batteries, wheels and brakes, uh, some sheet metal work, all of which again is, is licensed by, um, by EASA, by the UKCA. Uh, on behalf of EASA, so it's got its one four five licenses. Um, we see this. This is obviously saving us a huge amount of money already uh, on this type of work, uh, but we see it also uh, as leading into uh, a heavy maintenance capability. And you've already had some some interest from sort of a, a local airlines uh, from this. Oh yes, we have. Yeah, I mean, with it, it's, it's the only. This is the only workshop facility of its kind in this region. So it's not just the local airlines, but also the foreign airlines who are flying in here who need that work doing uh, for them. Generally speaking, on a, on an ad hoc basis. Um, because it's the only one of its kind in Central Asia, it's, it's, we're getting a huge amount of interest. But primarily, of course, it is for Aristana, um, and not a, a third-party centre at this, at this time. Okay. Um, can you say something about the, you're the only uh, Kazakhstan airline that, that's uh, currently allowed to fly to the EU. Can you say something about the, the, uh, the progress that's being made at the sort of national uh, regulators level to uh, sort of revisit this <coughs> and uh, you know, what's happening there? Sure. It's obviously this is a this is a big issue uh, for us, um, and when I say us, I mean the country. Uh, uh, in addition to simply Aristana, I mean obviously the IK audit um, in April two thousand nine was very disappointing. Um, it did reveal uh, significant safety concerns, um, and that did result um, in the uh, Safety Committee of the European Union uh, imposing a blanket ban on all. 
um, airlines from Kazakhstan, with the exception of Aristana, uh, because of our unique uh, sort of regulatory framework. Uh, but even Aristana um, didn't get off scot free. We have been limited um, to the total number of frequencies that we operated at that time, which was June 2009. We are limited to that number of frequencies uh, to this day. Uh, and obviously, you know, quite clearly that limits our or, 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 or stops our ability to grow our European network. Um, since that time, there has been progress um, at the Civil Aviation Committee, as we call it, the CAC. Uh, there has been progress, um, and you know we would hope um, that the CAC will be able to demonstrate to ICAO uh, on the occasion of the next audit uh, that that progress has been sufficient uh, to relax uh, some of those restrictions. Um, obviously, the European uh, position will very much depend on that IK audit um, and new European legislation um, will quite possibly provide for EASA itself uh, auditing uh, the Kazakhstan CAC. You know, again, we would hope uh, that in 2012 some of those restrictions will begin to uh, be relaxed. Okay. Uh, my, my final question then is, you've got a sort of a, a fleet revamp uh, already ongoing, but also uh, one uh, sort of planned with replacing sort of 767s and the, the 757, which is quite a, a unique aircraft. Can you go through sort of some of the options of the aircraft that you're, you're looking at and, and, and the, sort of the, the uh, you know, the, the balance of, of, you know, which one might, might suit it? Yes, I mean, for us, of course, you know, if you look at our geographic, geographical location, we're sort of exactly um, equidistant uh, between sort of major Southeast Asian centres um, and major European centres. Um, so, um, you know, we do have a lot of long uh, and at the moment pretty thin routes. Um, you know, if we're flying to Frankfurt or London or Bangkok or Kuala Lumpur or Seoul, um, we are, you know, we're flying for seven hours plus on all of those routes. Um, and yet, because the Kazakhstan market um, and the Central Asian market remains, you know, relatively small, um, these routes are really not, um, uh, uh, really cannot sustain uh, large, large wide bodies. Um, and so that's the reason why the 757 has done such a great job for us um, up until now, and indeed continues to do a good job for us. I mean, obviously, you know, the aircraft are getting older, it's out of production, etc., etc. They still perform very well for us. We've recently retrofitted the, the business class cabins, we've now got flatbeds, and so on and so forth. But the fact is, we're going to have to replace them sooner or later. Yeah. Um, we do have an outstanding uh, LOI for uh, 787s, um, which we probably do expect to convert into a firm order before too long. But unfortunately, uh, because of all the delays on the program, as of now, uh, those slots are only available in 2019. Um, you know, we would hope um, that that will change um, and that those slots could be advanced, uh, but that does in effect leave a gap between now and 2019, which we will have to fill um, with either uh, 767s, uh, new 767s, uh, or uh, A330s. Um, the A330 um, is probably newer technology, um, it is compatible, uh, the cockpit is compatible with our 320 uh, fleet, obviously. Um, but it is a heavier aircraft and it's a larger aircraft um, than we need at this particular point. Um, the 767 um, is uh, an older um, generation aircraft, but it is compatible uh, with our 757 fleet. So we could run, as indeed we do at the moment, we could run those two aircraft types um, in tandem um, and switch capacity. Um, depending on market demand um, on, a, on the basis of a, of a, of a degree of flexibility. Um, you know, new 767s with winglets um, are pretty com economical aircraft, of course, they're much lighter uh, than Airbuses. So that's really what we're looking at at the moment as the interim solution before the 787s come. Brilliant. Okay, thanks very much for your time. Not at all.